that's an interesting topic to me because I've followed a few meetings about these things. Oh, so, okay, okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, it's not something I know a great deal about, to be honest. And um, quite different. Just, yeah, just doing things like authenticating users and stuff, I, I found quite difficult in shiny and never ended up doing it properly anyway um but uh yeah it's a it's a big topic though isn't it security so what what did you do before you started learning shiny and stuff have you done kind of web development or anything like that before um i am a statistician um so i've started using r um i've been using excel um, because usually the data were already settled to me, so when I had to to check them. So um, uh, then I started with R because of the pandemic. I was looking at the who data, uh, so I needed uh, something to manage them better yeah, than yeah. Excel. So I've tried and uh, do it did some courses uh, and everything. So about a year now, it's oh, a year okay. now. That's cool. Really? You've yeah. obviously done a lot in a year then. Cause... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. Um, but uh, security was interesting to you because... What... Right, oh. right, yes. Um, I've followed a few webinars, a few meetings, um, uh, quite interested in understanding the problem and not how to solve it, but uh, just as a, to be aware of the yeah. things, how the, an attacker, for example, can operate within yeah. your devices. Uh, I even uh, flew to, to London for, for one of the cybersecurity meetings once. Wow. Uh, Yes, with the police, with the Europol, with the Metropolitan yeah. Police. Huh. Um, yeah, um, quite difficult to uh, address uh, uh, a solution, a proper solution for yeah. in these terms. Um, right, so now with Shiny, has been quite interesting to see because, um, you know, the action within the security of an app, it's limited because mm. you usually post the app on a server. So it's quite, it quite responsible of the server to be secure for your app. Um, so it's the other side that um, it's a bit complicated to me. But for, for, for this, um, meeting for this book club we just try to understand how to secure one app yeah, that yeah. we <laughs> maybe need to manage uh, and and have a, a little touch of the other condition which require more apps or the use of a server how to to relate this but just i don't know if someone else in the club has uh, experience about this it's very welcome to but take part and, uh, yeah, <laughs> and <nice>. just illuminate us <laughs> a bit more about this topic okay. Okay. So. yeah uh, sorry um you were saying that your your version of the book could kind of the the structure of it had corrupted or something is right. it looking okay for you now now it's okay because um, okay. I have managed a few few examples that you need to like restart R for opening them up. Uh, still didn't quite very well understood why, but uh, um, it's just uh, my um, the book the notes of the book notes just lost uh, um, the shape its shape. The, the sidebar wasn't there anymore, it was all on one page. Um, I've just, uh, like, uh, threw out the cache. It right. must have cached some uh, um, 
functions that cause yeah. this thing. Uh, now it's fine. Now it's fine. Cool, cool. Uh, just the the um, the version that you just uh, um, issued uh, that I have pushed it and you um, as uh, as uh, as well lost a bit of its shape because there were some functions which I have uh, uh, which I had. Uh, uh, formatted in, in a certain way that I can't find them anymore. But that's something that we relate with that later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. Uh, would you like to 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 start and share your screen and things like that and we'll sure. get on with everything because uh, there's a few people in now. Uh, okay. Let's let's start. Okay, so this is the, the chapter and um, it was uh, uh, first look was quite short, but then if you dive in it, you find lots of things. So I had uh, at the end to cut lots of information. So I've just put the, the few belonging to my understanding of the topic and we will have uh, a bit of uh, introduction of this topic and then uh, see if we can discuss a bit more about it so in this chapter we learn how to prevent some undesired outputs caused by malicious attackers or by misleading of inputs allowed by some functions combination uh, I have taken the, the paragraph of the, of the book and added some conclusion and resources. In, uh, in general, there will be always a responsible for, for some issues within the app and uh, usually is the one who deploys the app which is the responsible for security between the apps and within your app. When you post it, for example, on a server, uh, but it is possible for a knowledgeable attacker to send values that are not expected. So the advice is about how to secure your device by attackers at the moment is still not exhausted. So basically, it's very important to find solutions that are alternatives to the impossibility of stopping an attacker from invading the app and its content. So um, at, at this purpose, it's important to take consideration of functions that in combination can cause uh, like sort of holes, leave space for, for the attackers to put inside things that are not uh, uh, requested. Okay, so um, um, let's see that uh, two important are the, the, the sides that need to take um, a very important, like the validation part and the isolation part. So in the UI, you have uh, an, uh, the inputs and uh, the shiny input usually use a, a client side validation so you can uh, um, de um, de de define user specific needs uh, through obviously a login credential framework that you can uh, use to prevent other accessing uh, information that you don't want to show them basically while in the server the code need to be uh, it's important to be to isolate the part of the code which is um, uh, not secure which is can be attacked so for example one user uh, the security within the the server app assure that one user 
cannot see the data from another user if it's in a different session. So the only exception in this case if caching is in use. So more about this is in the last chapter of the book. So we will see this next week, I think. For, for what concerns the data, um, and that you basically uh, put inside an app and you retrieve it, uh, and obviously you want them to be safe uh, and you want maybe in the case that you want to show just some part of the data to someone else to someone and not to everyone accessing the the app uh, there are three recommendations this is by the book and says do not store the password in the source code of your app this is very important but you can uh, um, eventually store them in a variable which is could be located in the environment and uh, this variable uh, contains obviously, they, obviously they, they, some values which are sensitive values like passwords or uh, id and everything that you should store in a yaml file and this uh, YAML file, we'll see how to, to create them. Then uh, another, uh, the third recommendation is to check the git in your file uh, that uh, for, 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 um, for including this, these files, just to be sure that when you need, when you uh, push them, when you commit, make a commit, the, the file cannot, doesn't go everywhere so that the attacker can see it. So use Git in, in your to, to advise that you don't want to push this file as well. Okay, so um, authentication and client-side validation. Uh, basically, there is more than one alternative to authenticate. Uh, so, the first thing which is very important and uh, which is is the, the the security part of the app is to uh, add a layer uh, of security and this layer goes between the user interface and the shiny server which is a proxy here there is a like uh, an image of a proxy to, to give you an idea. Obviously, you already know what it is, but in case you don't know, a proxy is an interpreter. So an information goes and pass through the proxy to, to go on the other side and reach the, the, the audience. So the proxy will redirect the user to, in this case, to an identification page as a log login page. And once authenticated, it will check whether the user is authorized and then let them get access to the Shiny application. Um, for, for this purpose, I have selected uh, three packages for uh, setting up a login page, um, which is a layer of security. Uh, and these three packages use other two packages to add a fourth layer of security. So uh, the first package is config, and config is used to set up a config file, which is a, a YAML, config YAML file, where to store it uh, the ID, the user ID, and the password that you, you don't want to show uh, around. You don't want to keep it like a secret. And this YAML file, config YAML file, can be shared so you can use it within other packages. To, to create this uh, YAML file, you just... Uh, um, there are different options, but basically, and then we go through it uh, in a few minutes. Basically, the content of the file 
this YAML file will be like this. Default, it's what you need to, to put inside because otherwise it doesn't uh, recognize it. And then you store the information, the secret information. Then you call it back. If I, if I go too fast, just stop me anything. Uh, uh, then you storage this, um, this information in a, in a variable and call it back with get function. Uh, suppose that you have assigned um, a location for the file and then you call it back with get uh, function and retrieve it like the user ID or the password. Then we see how it, uh, it works in, pra in practice. The second package I've mentioned uh, is uh, OAT, auto zero. This auto um, is interesting packages. Uh, you package you you may want to log in, uh, create an account, and everything because it does provide it does provide a server for your app and a certain level of security. So as well as I said before, you can uh, uh, it does create a YAML file for by, by itself as well with you with this function you just do auto use auto uh, and this this command create a yemon file an auto yemon file and the inside of this file is this so there is some information it starts like this then you can modify it as uh, as needed then you can also uh, add some other layer of security, like um, positioning your information in a Renveron file. And uh, with use this package, you can create a Renveron file in the project directory. And you can as well storage this secret information in this. So like, like a, a sort of... Uh, um i can find the the word now but uh, uh box within the boxes within the boxes to to keep the thing secret then inside this renveron file you storage this information that you have uh created here yeah. um retrieve it to retrieve them you can use this and this is just uh, like a touch of information. Then we go forward with another package that we go back to this with a, there is um, an example for each package in the example for, examples folder, if you want to see. Then there is a, this other package with, which is a very interesting, Shani Manager. Shani Manager provide uh, demo examples for logins uh, uh, pages uh, in fact if i click here it should open up uh, the page for authentication and um, as i said you have here for educational purposes uh, the the password and the uh, the user and the password uh, as you see if i put um uh, like shiny 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 it leads us to a secret page mm -hmm. that otherwise couldn't be seen uh, they obviously have uh, uh, a github uh, where you can find everything but basically, the, import, the, the nice part of this package is that it does provide this function, which is secure app, which is used to wrap the UI in it. So you do the UI as always and put everything inside and everything. And then you wrap it in this secure app. And this secure app, I've been looking to it uh, as some uh, uh, layers of securities so it doesn't show the the ui the content of the ui unless you put the, the correct uh, credentials um as well does it within the server 
So, but it doesn't wrap the server, but put inside the server. Uh, this is the isolation uh, part of the server. Uh, these two functions, secure server and check credentials. I'll go forward so with, and then... Uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, with, with that, do you... Um, as, as the author of an of a app that uses these tools, do you have to then set up a, a database or something of the passwords and usernames and things the, for it? Or is the, do you set up a single username and password? Allora, uh, the, the, so the, uh, the author set up the, the credentials. Right. Uh, yes. Then uh, if you add more features, obviously you can ask the user to set up the credentials and then you can store them like for a certain number of days with cookies, with the use right. of cookies. Okay. Yeah. Um, then um, we have, a, I, I had to cut a lot of information because otherwise we don't have time. There will be, <laughs> it's a course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> after that, there is a shiny order package, which is uh, as well quite interesting. And uh, there is an app uh, to, to see. And it does provide a few functions like login UI, login server. And they can be used with the config package. So you can store the credential in a config YAML file and call it up with login UI. Um, this is also provide, as you ask it, a cookie based uh, automatic login. There, is, there are some functions. So this package provides a cookie-based automatic login, which means that the system can store the credential for some time as established by the creator of the app. Finally, there is Sodium. This is like uh, uh, config. It's um, a features of the credentials of these other three uh, packages because what it does with this function, password store, it does encryption. So grab the password that you have stored, this pass, for example, I have this password, no? Mm -hmm. Pass author one. If I use password store by sodium, it does encrypt the password and transform it like this with a long string of numbers and, uh, and letters. You can also verify if the password and these encryptions uh, uh, are uh, belonging to each other with this password verify. And it's very nice. Obviously, these are functions that you put inside your app use with one of these packages. Then uh, a suggestion by the book is to uh, grab a Studio Pro and have uh, a layer of security uh, with Kerberos, which is the dog, the three-head dog. Uh, <laughs> in the mythology, this is uh, the, the, the three-head dog. Uh, and it is a computer network authentication protocol developed by Massachusetts Institute of Technology and uh, has been classified as a military equipment by the authorities. So then uh, after a few versions has been released and modified uh, amply, um, by the Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden and by the Stanford University uh, and made available outside the US with some limitations. And now is available as a uh, stronger level of security with RStudio Pro. This is when you post the app, so you uh, publish the app in the server. Mm, okay. Then, um, okay, now we go uh, to a bit of practice things and see some examples and see that, uh, so in general, what happened in the app when setting up a login credential, 
is that you have a UI and you wrap your code within a certain level of security. And then you have the server where you should mine not to storage any form of credentials, but save them in separate files. I've mentioned as in the book, just YAML files, but you can use, as I've mentioned, Renviron, RDS, XML, whatever you want. So just obviously some, some type of uh, files are more secure because are not ac easily accessible. But mm, uh, suggestion is just to store credentials separately. Then there is uh, this event reactive function to put inside the server. Uh, and we see uh, because um, it's important, just uh, a bit forward. The first example that I want to show you is by the shiny author package. Uh, this is the outcome of the layer and, and this is the app. So this is the app. Okay, so the app for educational purposes has the credentials stored in uh, here, so in the in the R file. So the, this this uh, uh, basically what I have done is I have put this inside a config file. Let's see if I'm, I'm able to show you how. Uh, this is shiny author and this is the app. Can you see? Uh, can you see my R? Um, I can, we can see your code. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, we can see the R Studio. Okay. okay. Yes, yes. Um, my R Studio, yes. So as you can see, this is the app. Uh, we had uh, um, here, no? Right. In the, the this app here. In my R Studio, uh, and you find this in the examples. I have substituted this part, which is the table, the table with the secret information, in a config file. Um, as you can see, I've made uh, this folder, named conf, and inside there is a config YAML file, which is this. Default, user, password, permission, and everything. Um, then inside the app, I've, I call it back, I call the information back with get. And then set up a table as well. Mm, that uh, recall this information. Hmm. Then you have the app, which is the does. Uh, this is the uh, output of, of the app. And uh, you insert the information uh, that are stored inside the file. User one and pass one. Basically, I've done like this, like library shine. I, I, I don't want to. Uh, OK, and then this is a shiny order. Then you uh, do this, and then the, the table, and then you have the app. So the UI, which um, that wasn't needed, um, call, uh, recall a shiny order, log out first, and then log in 
which is this is the basically wrapping the uh, the information mm. and then the server the output is a user table so with the information then we see then the server uh, has this function login server where are all the information and this is the table use based config that i've just uh, set here and then you got the shiny app which should appear okay so the password that i have settled is user one uh where is it oh here user one and pass one Mm -hmm. And it it does open the table with the, the information, which is this one here. Then you log out and it goes back. Obviously, uh, there is a bit of work to do because you can add more users and put it inside here. So it requires default, but then you can uh, like do it like this um say config and get and say that uh, you can uh, add some more information inside uh, beside default but default has to be there um, okay there's lots of information so i'll go uh, forward and see where is it? Okay. Uh, and this is uh, how to use a shiny order to set up a login page in the server and in the UI. So in the UI, you use logout and login. This is up to you what you want to show up. Obviously, in this app, it's shown a user table. Then you can show other things. In the server, there is a login server. And uh, logout server. Then there is uh, um, this rec function to mention. There are other things, but there is uh, this rec function to mention, and we will see uh, how it's very important. This is very important because uh, it only show the things after successful, successful log logins. Uh, for example, we can see it here. Um, so, um, this is another example, which is using client-side validation. Uh, basically, what an attacker does is getting inside, using JavaScript, and adding or modifying information. This is what happened. For example, if I have secrets, like uh, social security numbers, credit cards, and everything. I want to show just these two information, not everything. If I do, uh, so allowed just these two and not the other, it's not enough. Because an attacker can get inside and with this function, modify the thing. So to turn around, uh, you can use a rec function which is this, and this is your UI, and the server, without this function, let the, the attacker use this function to make modifications. With this function, is a bit dif more difficult. Okay, it's, um, that would be, that require more, more, more meetings. It's a bit strong. <laughs> <laughs>
So I go, uh, this is uh, the data part of the, 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 the chapter, mm. which I have uh, uh, done like this. Mm. Then there is computer, uh -oh. okay, Com compute resources, which says, beside the fact that you need to log in and create a layer, there are some functions you need to mine because the combination of these functions can create space for doubt. Mm. So basically, uh, I've been asking myself because I've followed lots of meetings. I'm interested in this cybersecurity stuff, no? And say, what about errors beside attackers and everything and malicious and everything? What about errors? What about alls? What about misunderstandings between uh, interacting uh, system languages? Uh, what about danger, dangerous functions combina function combinations? So selective characters such as special characters that are not recogn recognizable by the system language. What can be done to prevent unexpected from values from being used? So turning back to malicious, an attacker can run any R code they want, delete important files, modify data, send confidential data back to the user of the app. So basically, you should never source an uploaded R file or render in R markdown an uploaded R markdown. You should mind the combination of parse with a val as a big warning. And then danger is that uh, it is possible to ask R to execute arbitrary code inside a model formula, which is very, <laughs> uh, very concerning. So for what concern Pars and eval. There is an example here, which is use eval and then parts, which lets the user just insert numeric values and not anything else. Then there is this nice formula which I use sometimes. This is uh, the linear model formulation. Yeah. Okay, and you can actually use it to print I. Hello. <laughs> so you might, so a, an attacker might use that. So if there was a, if there was a selector for regress yeah. against this variable and they typed in, um, you know, print some function that deletes all your files or something. Um, Right. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that's quite that's quite neat. Sorry. That that's that's um, uh, where is it? Uh, 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 computer resources. Here, if I do this, I don't know if you can see it. I have this, and I do this. Ah, uh, no, it's the app on. Okay, let's forget. But anyway, if I uh, execute this function, it does print I. Usually this function doesn't print anything because you need to, doesn't print anything, does, does print what the function does. Then you need to assign to a variable and calling as a summary to receive the numbers that you want. But uh, you, it's never supposed to receive an I, an hello, a salutation. <laughs> so, or, an, or maybe other uh, more dangerous things. So this is something that can happen with this function. And more things can happen with glue. So, but glue turns around, say, if you use glue safe, at least it does uh, warn you that there is an error. So you can use glue, 
but it does suggest you to use glue safe instead because glue safe uh, recognize uh, something that shouldn't be there somehow so it does say that there is an error so it suggests you to use glue safe instead of just glue And these are nice things because um, names uh, uh, can really change themselves into something else. And uh, when you request a table of names, you can just drop the rest of the table and find just, some, just someone and not all the rest, which is nice uh, within the recruitment system. Um, and so can be cause of a uh, large problem within the society. Mm. So you should as well uh, use some, when you do an SQL query with past, because you want maybe do some selections of names and everything, it's suggested to use glue SQL, SQL because at least it does somehow advice there is something wrong so I'll talk at 42 minutes <laughs> <laughs> then uh, the end of the book is uh, that you may want to publish your app somehow uh, when you've done it when you uh, when it's shaved it's good it's nice you like it you want to publish so you can publish to shinyapp.io uh, and you have some lay double layer of security, then you can look at it because it's a chapter of, in itself with lots of things to see. And then uh, there are some resources. Um, in conclusion, securing an app might require some extra work around all the information available as well as all the extra available packages, functions that can be used for authenticating and avoid the wrongful combination of function or commands. This might be the case for apps containing sensitive information or those for letting the user access restricted data. Obviously, it's not for a map. If you have a map and you want to show to everyone, you don't need this. Maybe you might require some layers of security, avoiding someone getting inside and changing things. <laughs> and you know what? These are lots of resources. I've put everything here if you want to see them. Mm. Uh, but it's more to say. So stop sharing. That's cool. So there's quite a lot. The, the, it, your your um, section on authentication and, and things like that, was that part of uh, one of the, was that? something of your own interest or was that that something that Hadley linked to in the chapter because a lot of it was uh, completely new to me even though I'd kind of read the chapter um, so things like ortho and um, search engine manager yeah I have, <laughs> I have been searching information because the the chapter looked like fantastic very short yeah so I said, there is something in it. So I've mm. been looking and searching for things and there's lots of things. Then I have selected a mm, few packages, but there's more to use and you can, you cannot use them. For example, you cannot even use them, but they have already settled some mm, function with a certain level of security in it. Yeah. So I haven't, I forgot to mention um there is a, um, a package which lets you just jump using some functions because are already inside the function provided uh, i can show you i don't know some apps and see as i have said 
I don't know if you have some questions you want to discuss something about this. If you have some experiences about this, that would be yeah. useful. Yeah, that, that's one thing I was curious about is if anybody has ever had to implement, you know, any of these security measures in their own apps, and particularly like in an enterprise environment. And what does the relationship look like between, like, the data scientist or app developer? and the um, like software engineer side, like the security experts. And I imagine they don't tend to not know very much about R. So yeah. I'm curious how, if anybody's worked in that environment, how the dynamic works. If that all makes sense. <laughs> no, I don't, it didn't sound, it didn't yeah. sound like anyone was in that situation yeah my my personal experience is that um you use your you access every day uh, always to a layer of that kind so mm. you there is the chain ring for example provided by um there is a package which is chain ring as well you can use that for it's like google chrome in chrome where you store all your info credentials for different sites that you mm -hmm. go it's it's concerning thing that you are if you are secure with your credentials or not so may, you may haven't used it to to set up um an app for example to secure an app i don't know but anyone has given some thought about this and thinking how to to make the things a bit more secure yeah and I, I imagine a lot of shiny users probably if they need authentication and login they probably use something like shiny shiny apps dio or um like our studio connect because it they both handle that sort of thing instead of like manually you know making your own solution yeah um i mean i have from the authentication or security point of view i think only uh, thing that i have used is rs connect and you know that oh you give access to the users you want um yeah and that's that Yeah, no, I find um, one of the things that I was reading through in, in the book was where they were talking about um, kind of not keeping your config files in version control and um, which I, I, I can understand from one perspective, but like my, my kind of most recent experience with um, publishing apps, uh, deploying apps was to do this from using like GitHub Actions. So, you know, in, in order to use that workflow, you'd have to have some way of constructing the file that contains your secrets. And we did that using a relatively simple thing where you put the secrets into the R environ file and then transfer that to shinyapps.io. But I, uh, yeah, I, did, I, I hadn't even considered like, just um the the thing where you'd just have your config file on your local computer and wouldn't put anything that may have secrets in the future onto um into version control that was quite it it it, it i don't think it'll work in my setting but it's quite neat uh anyway um but um, I'll share again in my screen because yeah? I want to show you uh, something. Um, this is my R. Okay, so I stop the the uh, the, the things because mm -hmm. it's not needed. Um, what my understanding of the thing is, you have an app which is this okay let, let's forget 
this part, which is the table with the credentials. Let's forget this part, which I have added for the config, no? Because you can put this in another R script, for example, and have just the app in your script. But the, the, my understanding is, have a separate folder yeah. with a YAML file or maybe a Renviron file, or uh, which is a side of uh, your script. So it's not, uh, it's a bit difficult to access to it, basically. And then uh, they have a sort of uh, language. Basically, config, for example, is made uh, as for international collaboration. So as a sort of language, which is understandable internationally. Um, there is a auto, uh, the, the, the package uh, auto, uh, auto zero, this one here, there has an, an auto YAML file, which is different inside is different. So you don't need the default. You, if you don't put default in config, it doesn't work. So in the auto YAML file, there is no default. So this is different. So they have different language. So you can use, you, you can have a double layer having this file with some information, the config file with some other info, so that they are, they have different language. So it's a bit difficult, I stop sharing. It's a bit difficult for the attacker, if there's one, if there's any, yeah. to get inside one and then another. So it takes time at least and even if you position it them i i did position them inside the same folder of the app for uh because it, it's easier to me to access now access them now to show you but you can locate them somewhere else so uh, this is the um, an introduction of the thing. So I just remembered um, a, 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 an example where I dealt with like security issues. It wasn't for Shiny, but it was on Plumber. Um, so I have a database that I wanted to access through to, to you know send data to the user. And so I just use an R environment file, one that's saved in like my local computer. And then I go in and put it into the server that gives, you know, the server has a separate login. So I guess, I don't know how relevant it is. I just thought of that, that I'd share. Yeah. That's very relevant. If you can, can you show us? <laughs> if you can show us, that would be wonderful. Uh, yeah, give me a second. Okay, let's see, let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, um, basically in the R server, where is it? Um, okay, so this is the API here. Um, and so what it does to, let me find, oh, okay, so to log, this is like logging into the, um, connecting to the database. And what, basically what it does is I have an R environment file that stores this environment variable that has like the connection string. And so it's just gonna pull from whatever, whatever environment it's in, whatever. So this, this, this variable is set both in my local environment on my local computer through an R environment file that I have like in the project. And then it's also lives in like the appropriate place on the server. 
So it sets up environment variable there. And they're, they're different because I have one login for myself locally and then one login for the server. Right. To and try to minimize access that the server can only like read, for example, and can't write anything. Yeah, because he, you use this function, sys get env. Uh -huh. this, this, this function here uh, that's mentioned in the book used to retrieve information because get the environment, get sys, uh, the, the, in mm -hmm. the system, get the environment. Uh, so you use this function to retrieve, uh, in, in this case, a DB connection. Yeah. And so in this way, I don't have to like have like a, a, a switch statement or something like that to say, oh, if it's local, use this. And then, or if it's, you know, on the server, use this. It just, just use this one, uh, one line here. And then I just have two separate um, R environment files depending on where, where, what computer it lives on or what computer I'm using at the time. And where did you put the, uh, the credentials, the security part of? So it's in, it, so it, in the R Studio project, there, there's another file on my local computer. You could see another file. Ah, that okay. I have <laughs> on the Git ignore. Um, yeah. Our, ah, okay. Uh, Rambir, I'm fine. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then on the server, it's just, I don't remember exactly, but it's in the place wherever, the, wherever the API uh -huh. lives, it's in the same directory. So it knows how to, how to get to it. Cool. And another suggestion by all the, the, the meetings and the things I've followed are uh, when you made a pa when you make a password, just setting it up with, of made of three parts, maybe mm -hmm. three three words that are uh, uh, knowledgeable to you, mm -hmm. and add like numbers because that would be more complicated to to retrieve by an attacker. So you have a composition of three different words with some numbers. Okay, and then yeah. there is that nice function uh, with sodium, which makes the the long string and encrypts your password. So you set whatever password you want, and then you encrypt it. Oh yeah, that's a it's a good idea. I hadn't think hadn't thought about that. Right. Cool. Um, yeah, I was worried when I was um, um, uh, merging in your code uh, for for this week's chapter that you might have like thrown in some security loopholes for us that might break the uh, for data science GitHub account or something. Um, that would be nice. <laughs> I'm not that level. Um, yeah, uh, no, but that was brilliant. Thanks, thanks a lot. That was it was a lot more than uh, I, I, I kind of expected you to cover, to be honest. In, in given you know having had a quick run through the chapter, um, but yeah, no, that was great. Thanks a lot. Um, so uh, um, next week we've got the I don't know what it's called, optimization or something like that chapter. So it's about um, profiling your apps and what you can do to um speed them up or use less memory or um um things like that so uh, and and the caching that um that yeah. Federico was mentioning earlier on um if anyone wants to do that talk you are more than welcome to take over because it's the very last chapter of the book um uh, and probably in two weeks time we might we 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 We've got a, a date booked in the um, R for Data Science uh, channel to to have a kind of summary session, and I might pull together some of the examples that we used in the book or something like that. Um, uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, if if anyone wants to do a talk next week, they would be more than welcome. Um, yeah. Anyway, yes, thanks Federica, that was great. Thank yes. you. <laughs> okay, I'll see you all next week.
Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.